Prepare for the extraction point. We've been briefed on all the important stories and events in the world of emerging information. Now, it's time to extract the data and turn it into action. Live from the SiliconANGLE studios in the heart of Silicon Valley, this is Extraction Point with John Furrier. Hi, I'm John Furrier with uh, the Extraction Point, turning the uh, signal out of the noise, turning data into action. This is your Extraction Point. I'm here with Rich Skrent, the CEO and co-founder of uh, Blecko, who's joining us today. But first up on the news today, Google is announcing social search or an update to their social search and uh, updated some real-time capabilities from search from a year ago. And this is, this is an interesting story about Google. They're launching um, real-time Twitter, friend data, essentially social graph information into the Google search results. And the extraction point here is, is that Google is actually turning into a social company, trying to be like Facebook. But the reality is, is that Google already has a lot of social data. They have a ton of data on us from their toolbar, Gmail, or services we use on Google. And they're going to try to integrate that into the search results. My angle on that is that they're trying to be sticky. They see Facebook you know, soaring with growth, 600 million people and growing. If you look at the amount of time Google users, I mean, uh, Facebook users stay on the site, it's growing at leaps and bounds. And Google is definitely, definitely threatened by this. So this is a signal from Google that, one, they have the data. And two, they're going to move aggressively to counter Facebook. And they're really trying to create that aggregate data set to create a user experience that's sticky so that people can move back to Google. And it's really a, a move away from their classic search result, which is find stuff, get in, get out, and they're trying to make it more sticky. So that's the, the, the key extraction point. We're going to watch that from Google. Um, Google has been known over the past years of really not innovating well within the search result. I've written many blog posts and tweeted many times that you know Google's, Google's phenomenal for search, for finding things like maps and stuff. But... You know, it's been talked about in the press and by me that it's littered with spam, backlinks. Uh, now the, the recent debate, which we'll talk about today with Rich Skrenta from Blecko, is the whole content farm debate. So, you know, Google uh, is Google. They, they're huge players. They own a major market share, major market share in, in the business. But they have to really start thinking about innovation around their data. They really have to start thinking about using that to be more social and need a move against Facebook. So that's the key extraction point for, for Google. Point number two, it's now official. We are not in a tech bubble, um, says our favorite community college of startups, Y Combinator. Paul Graham announced today on uh, Hacker News that uh, it, we're not in a tech bubble. And I got some quotes here from that, and uh, it's, it's pretty funny. He says, Paul Graham says, in the 90s, it was the dumb leading the dumb. Smooth-talking MBAs were r raising money from hapless limited partners and investing it in startups run by other smooth-talking smooth MBAs, he said. Now it's Yuri Milner investing in companies run by Mark Zuckerberg. So, you know, smooth-talking MBAs to Russian investors, I don't know what bubble we're in now, but it sure seems like a bubble. I wrote a blog post about it. Are we in a bubble? Yes and no. I think we are and aren't, and we'll have more to drill down on that. But not to be outdone by that, Mark Cuban weighs in today and, and says uh, it's a new era like the old email chain letters. And a uh, story on private equity hub, uh, uh, pehub.com had a great story. And it's, quote, remember the old chain letters where you put some money up, then you get other people to put money up, and then you give it to other people who were in the deal before you? That's what's happening today, says Mark Cuban, who knows a lot about bubbles, who sold broadcast.com for a billion dollars, I would say, at the top of the bubble. And he's smiling because the bubble bar bursted right after he sold broadcast.com. Now he owns a sports team. He's, uh, you know, living the high life. And you know, we're a big fan of Mark Cuban. Um, but he's saying it's, it's, a, it's a scam. It's a chain letter scam. And the VCs are paying uh, top dollar from the VCs before him. And he said uh, the only players really on the hook are the guys from the last rounds holding the hot potato at the end. Not to be outdone, Andy Kessler yesterday here on Extraction Point talked about the bubble in detail. And uh, his angle was that the valuations are completely bogus because there really is no free market to validate whether or not the valuations are good. So if Zynga's getting $9 billion and Twitter's going to get $5, $10 billion, Facebook's got $60 billion, yeah, there's some shares trading hands, but people aren't meeting in the middle to really understand the true value. So the, you know that those kinds of valuations really are not really that set in reality. 
And that's the message from Andy Kessler. And he said, uh, you don't want to be the last one holding the potato at the end of the, when it pops. So that's the key to success with that. The third point is today, and extraction point is, President Obama is in Silicon Valley for a big dinner with industry leaders from Silicon Valley. He's going to be meeting with uh, Mark Zuckerberg, Steve Jobs, and even Carol Bartz got on the list, which surprises me because she's been probably the worst CEO in tech in the past three years doing nothing with Yahoo uh, as they crumb, continue to crumble. But you had a lot of other big names in there. And, and I think, you know, as Andy Kessler and I talked about yesterday in the extraction point, is that the government really to be effective needs to just get out of the way. And I think the government policies, whether it's net neutrality or promoting innovation and job creation, really should just let the smart people do their thing, let the Silicon Valley tech leaders and young startups get out there and lead the way and create jobs and just stay out of the way. So if they want innovation, we think it's in the big data, we think it's in infrastructure, we think it's in real computer science. And Rich, we, you and I will talk about that today, about you know computer science and real tech, not just some fancy app, not some game app, but like real tech. And uh, the extraction point uh, here uh, today for the interview is uh, Rich Grenta, the CEO and co-founder of Blecko. And the, the innovation of the future, in our opinion, is going to come from this convergence of a new user experience, where infrastructure and services are driving a new economy, new value, new user experience. And to me, the signals like Twitter and Facebook and these new apps uh, coming on Apple's App Store are a sign that the world's shifting and the user experience is changing. The web is changing. The internet now is mature. The plumbing's all in place. There's services on top of it. But there still needs to have some innovation. So, Rich, welcome to Extraction Point uh, here today. Thank you, John. And let's let's talk about that. Let's talk about the the world we live in. You are you are the CEO and co-founder of Blecko, which is a search engine. And I guess search engine is kind of an old word, but still people search for things. And search is dominated by Google. Now Bing's trying to nip at their heels. Yahoo's kind of sideways and and, and you know sinking fast. Um, but search is is about users finding things, and the and the world's changing, and there needs tech involved. Talk about uh, your view on search today. Well, that, that's exactly right. You know, people, you know, when they go looking for something, they always turn to a search engine. And that's why search engines make more money online than any other business. Search CPMs are $50 to $100. You compare CPMs on a news site, you know, it might be $10 CPM, or on a social network, you know, $0.50, cents, a dollar CPM maybe. Search is so valuable because that's where people turn when they, when they want to find something. But search isn't done. I mean, the composition of the web has changed so dramatically over the past decade. In 2000, we had about a billion earls on the web. We're up way over 100 billion earls today. Different kinds of material, all the social graph data that didn't exist a decade ago. New categories of search. I mean, folks go over to search.twitter.com and they don't say, hey, I'm cheating on Google. They're like, I can do new searches that I just wasn't doing before. I couldn't pull the audience during a presidential debate and see what other people were thinking. Uh, and we find this absolutely fascinating. You, I, was, um, I just want to say to the folks out there who, who know me and follow me on Twitter, or if you don't follow me on Twitter, I was pretty critical of Rich's company when they launched. I uh, was a big fan when you spun out of Topics, your last company. You brought your whole team of uh, super geeks over there, real computer science guys doing some good work. But your launch was, I, I think the title was uh, All Sizzle, No Steak or something like I that. I remember that, yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and mainly because I just had a bad user experience when I first used it. But I got to say, you guys, as I, as I dug into the story more and looked into it, you guys were a victim of the press. The press were, were pitting you against Google, and you guys really, as a company, didn't come out and overhype yourselves. You, you stayed kind of close to your knitting, building some tech. It takes some time to build these kinds of systems. You weren't doing a lot of PR. You didn't want the big splash. You were pretty, pretty much not looking for that, but yet the press built you guys up as this big story, the next Google killer. Uh, do you want to kind of clarify that and clean the record up there and, and then you know, I'll fall on my sword? That's the story they want to write. You know, I, I had a blog post uh, actually I think like two years ago where I said there's no such thing as a Google killer. Google's got 20,000 employees. I think half of them have PhDs. You know, they're a great company. They're not going anywhere. But when you launch a search company, people, you know, don't say, oh, how many user users are you going to get? Or how are you going to appeal to, you know, a certain segment of the market? Or, you know, what's your plan to, you know, roll out new products? They say... How are you going to kill Google? And when you launch other kinds of companies, if you launch a new you know, social gaming company, people don't say, well, how are you going to put electronic arts out of business? How are you going to kill Zynga? That's not the question you get. But there's something about the search space that if you launch a search company, by default, 
you know, Blecko, new Google killer. I mean, that's the headline that, you know, everybody wrote, and uh, it certainly wasn't part of our message. But no one's really launching search startups today. I mean, I think about search a lot. It's something that I'm really into um, and been a student of the whole search industry really from the beginning. And, and you know, you, you can't not think about Google as the major player because they own the market, and you got Bing out there. But, you know, you know Google Google launched search when everyone thought search was portals, right? So so it's, it's a fair... It's a fair thesis to say, hey, there's a business in search. If you build some good technology and create a great user experience, it's not a bad business opportunity, right? I mean, that was pretty much what you, we were, guys were thinking, or? That's right. I mean, search CPMs are so valuable, and you know, you're right. We, we don't see a lot of search startups launching. In fact, I think we're the last one. I mean, there's actually three search engines left. There's Google, Bing, and now Blacko. And there just aren't any other entities out there building search technology, crawling the web, you know, and trying to differentiate a product in the market. And that's kind of, you know, we, we scratch our heads over that. We don't understand why VCs don't want to fund more search startups. I mean, maybe it's because there have been some high-profile failures in the space. Uh, you know, you need 5 or $10 million in hardware to go build a search engine. You can't do it with EC2. You can't do it with Y Combinator funding. It's not possible. But 5 or $10 million in hardware, I mean, that's the sweet spot for what VCs like to write checks for. It's not drug discovery. It's not FDA stage three trials or building And there's some tech pad. involved. I mean, you, there's some it's computer serious science, tech, yeah. serious tech, which we'll drill into in a second. Um, but let's talk about what's different. I mean, what Google made Google so great was they had a very unique perspective. Obviously, the founders were focused on quality mm -hmm. and a specific thing about Google. And we all know, insiders know the history of Google. They were pushing away from advertising mm -hmm. until the very end, until Omid kind of, you know, forced them ha their hand to kind of take ads. Um, but Google, you know, simple search box, high quality. Mm -hmm. But that was different. That was something that was different back then in the day, right? You know, versus everyone going portal. What's different about what you're seeing, uh, and what you guys see as a vision? Not necessarily, you know, lay all your cards on the table, but what do you see that that's going to give you some opportunity and some lift in, a, in the marketplace? And is it the platform? Is it the the user participation? Um, is it all of the above? Well, you know, we have a feature called slash tags that let you basically pick a high quality vertical. It's corpus selection. If I put slash health on my Blacko query. I know I'm getting only trusted health sites. If I put slash colleges, I've got a good college search engine. If I do slash hotels, it's a hotel search engine. We have thousands of, the, of these slash tags. And we think they're necessary because at this point, the web has become so big, so inundated with spam, the cost of making new web pages is, is effectively zero. Or if you're willing to pay some folks in content swept shops, maybe you pay five cents to generate a couple hundred words of content. You can't write algorithms to pick up all the garbage on the web anymore. The garbage outweighs the good stuff 99 to 1. The only way to do this is to make you know, categories of the best sites, category by category, and then try and get the user's query into that good category. Uh, this is a new problem. This is a new problem that's really you know, been developed over the past you know, five years. 2005, search results were a lot better than they are now. But now you've got these giant entities just putting, you know, I think Demand Media puts 20,000 new articles onto the web yep. every day. Articles about medical topics, right? Do you want an article about osteoblastoma that was written by somebody who was paid five cents to do it who doesn't have a medical degree? I, that's, you shouldn't be getting your medical content from it. Well, let's talk about the content farms, but first let's just ask Ricky. Ricky, do you have a screenshot of the, um, the Blecko search or a demo? Did you have that demo? And we'll see if we come with the demo. So Blecko is a search engine, obviously. You guys have a unique approach. Um, you guys are a startup. Um, let's just sort of walk through a demo here, um, if possible. Um, yeah, okay, sure. we have it on the screen. So there's your search box. So it looks very Google-like. So I'm going to type in Obama. Walk us through the play-by-play -play here. Yeah, go ahead and hit search. So you've got your standard results here, BarackObama.com. Uh, I've got New York Times number two. If you go ahead and click on the slash date that's in the upper right above the search results, we'll sort of demo one of our more popular slash tags. You can add slash date to any search and basically sort the entire web by date. And you can see in the lower right of each result, we've got two minutes ago, seven minutes ago, seven So slash, just as a clarification, is a user-generated um, folksonomy or? It's a way to tell Blecko to, to basically modify your search and, and do users something can do that. And users do that, right? Uh, well, slash date is one that we've made. You've done, yeah. It's a, it's a, you know, not every URL on the web has the date property, right? Home pages don't have a publish time. It's the interior posts that yeah. come out on, on the pages. So it's a way to basically sort the entire web by date. We could do another kind of search, um, you know, instead of slash date, you could do slash liberal or slash conservative. Let's just search the liberal web. Let's just search the conservative web. Uh, you could do, yeah, let's go ahead and check that out. 
Do Obama slash San Francisco, or would that be a test slash tag? I don't know if we have a slash San Francisco tag or not. Innovation. Um, I don't know if we have an innovation tag. It's a, you know, it's a fixed taxonomy. Let's try green slash green. Yeah. Um, this is, you know, we're going to search green friendly websites. Uh, Obama says climate change is real. We'll hit, we'll hire Gore. This is really interesting, right? This is a search that you can't Tree hugger. do <laughs> on, on Google, right? This is a novel kind of search. And you say, well, what is this green thing? Go ahead and click on the, you see right above the uh, top search result, uh, it says uh, slash green there. And that's a link that you can go ahead and click on. And we'll show you the list of sites that we've put onto our green slash tag. Now, maybe these are good, maybe these are bad. This is sort of a first draft we've taken. We're inviting people from the public to come in and help us extend this, help us edit these, these slash tags. And since we've launched on November 1st, we've had, uh, about 50,000 slash tags actually created by uh, members of the public. Uh, so it's really helping us fill out our system with a Wikipedia-like model. Do you have a developer API? Uh, we do have a number of APIs, yeah. We've had some so pretty cool stuff. So if I want cool to develop as a developer, I can play with this? Yeah, just write to us. Uh, we have uh, API auth at blackout.com. We'll send you an API key that'll let you get past our rate limits that uh, the scrapers are coming in through. And, uh, and then uh, we'll get you all set up with uh, some documentation. So... Um, the content farm spam, people in, out in the real world that don't know the search business think of spam. They think of email, you know, mm -hmm. Viagra and their inbox right. and all that stuff. The web is getting the same kind of effect where web pages are bombing Google. That's exactly right. Massive it's amounts of like crap just mm -hmm. to get redirection to some sort of paid yeah. scam or affiliate program, right? That's right. I mean, the same thing that happened to your email inbox in the 90s, right? <clears throat> I remember a paper came out of Microsoft's Hotmail team, and they said, hey, we looked at the SMTP traffic on the wire, and 95% of it is spam now. You're like, wow, 95% of all email traffic is spam. What happens when 95% of all the web pages out there are spam? Well, I'll tell you, PageRank doesn't work anymore in that world, right? And you better figure out what the good 5% is and just run your link analysis on that and exclude all the other garbage. Um, you know, that's a starting point, and that's that's. It's a firewall. It's just do. assume everything's spam, and what you're doing is assuming everything is spam and focusing on the quality. Opt in is better than opt out at this point. There's too much, too much bad. And Google social search. Your what's your um, what's your opinion on your angle on you know, I haven't, social social search? I haven't checked out Google's uh, product, but uh, you know, we did an integration on Bleco with uh, Facebook, where we, if you log into Bleco through Facebook, uh, we have a. a pitch on our site that says friends make search better. If you click that, sign in through Facebook, we'll personalize your results using the Facebook Graph API data. So if you do a search like say San Francisco Sushi, you can see if some of your friends have liked some of these, res uh, these restaurants. And you could add slash likes to the query and then only get results that your friends have liked. When you think about what's the, what's the signal in a random URL on the web pointing at a random web page versus the signal in a random Facebook user's like, and because Facebook more tightly controls, you know, most of the people on Facebook are actually people to start with, which is you're already light years ahead of, of links when you do that. And then we're not going to consider every like on Facebook. We're just going to consider people that you're connected to. Yeah. And you're probably not connected to a whole bunch of spammers, right? You're connected to people you know. Yeah. And when you take that body of data and project it onto the web and use that for relevance ranking, it's just light years better than using links. Let's talk about blacklisting because um, the, some of the sites out there basically have been blacklisting Demand Media's eHouse site. Mm -hmm. um, is that good, bad for the industry? Is it time to say, start whitelisting and blacklisting sites? I mean, do you guys do that? Well, we yeah, we went and uh, we, we've got a feature on Blacko. Under every one of our results, there's a button called slash spam. And you can click on slash spam and ban that site from your own personal search index. So every search you do in the future, uh, you won't see that site. Well, after three months, so when we launched on November 1st, we went back and looked at the data and said, well, what did everyone click slash spam on? Let's go tally it up. And, you know, Run a we had, we had the, the, yeah, we had the, the top 20 most hated sites on Blacko at that point. And I said, well, you know, here we are picking the best sites vertical by vertical. We've got the top health sites, the top lyric sites, you know, the top recipe sites. But here I have a list of all the worst sites. Why do we have these people on our index? Why don't we just kick them all out? So we did that. We banned the top 20 content farms, including like sites like Experts, Experts Exchange, uh, Demand Media's Answer Bag, and eHow.com, and some other sites. And you know, I got a lot of heat from that. I had the CEOs from these companies coming to me, coming to me through my investors, through my board, saying, "Hey, Rich, we want to explain to you how great our content is." And I said, "Look, you know, I hear you, but all I know is that everybody on the web hates your site." 
and you can tell me that you've got this great site and it's full of wonderful content, but everybody hates you. Why should I leave you in the in the index? Yeah, and I don't want to, yeah. you know, let's not be mealy mouthed about this. Not say, well, we're going to let the algorithm decide. No, everybody hates your site. You're out. Search yeah. is editorial. Let's clean it up. Yeah. By the way, people are seeing a little QR code on the, uh, the screen. If you whip out your mobile phone and click on that, we're running an experiment to see who c will click on it. We had 350 click-throughs last time, so um, we're experimenting with trying to tie content to the video. Um, Can I click on it? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Yeah, go ahead and see what happens. Um, yeah, I mean, so I'm I'm really impressed with the uh, bravado and and the the guts you guys have taken with that. I I got to say, you know, that's bold and that's what we need right now. Let's talk about tech, Ooh, technology. It Did it work? Yeah, it's okay. cool. Where'd it go? Oh, I think it might I be it. redirecting to. Uh, it redirected somewhere. That's very cool. Let's talk about the technology you guys have. So so you've got some deals going on um, with Stack Overflow. We'll talk about that in a second. You have mm -hmm. the slash like button, which is, I do agree, friends do make search easier, which makes Facebook so interesting. Mm -hmm. um, this graph API from Facebook, you're doing that. You're doing a million queries a day. What are, what's the biggest tech feature that you have that drives your, your core engine? Is it software or is it the hardware? Is it the SSDs we were talking about? You need quite a bit of hardware to crawl the web. Um, we have 700 servers, and we basically built a big distributed data store that we could copy the web into and use that so that our small engineering team could be more productive building a big search engine, which is a hard task. So it's a big structured data store. It looks a lot like Google Bigtable from the top down, but it's an integrated design. But we crawl, index, and serve out of a structured data store, not flat files that are you know custom code. Uh, but a programmer can write a couple of lines. They can fetch any web page, get all of the backlinks, get the anchor text, get all of our classifier facets, figure out if any users put them into a slash tag. R a really rich API that our program programmers can use internally to build a search application. And it's let us cover a lot more grounds more quickly than we otherwise could have. What about the slash tags? How are you handling that kind of inbound data? Mm -hmm. I mean, are you integrating it right into a core index? Is it just separated from the core? It's all corpus? stored in our main in our main data store. So at search time, if you are logged into Blacko, we'll go and you know basically do the fetches that put together your, your search page based on the keywords you fetched. We'll also go and say, okay, do you have a slash spam slash tag? Let's go fetch that list and scrub any domain or any URL that you've put onto that list out of your results. Have you applied a slash tag? Let's go you know, basically intersect the web against your slash tag and return that. If you have logged in through Facebook, that makes a set of virtual slash tags on Blacko, the slash likes tags. And so we'll take every one of your queries and compare it against the like data, annotate the snippet so that you can see if one of your friends liked that site. And if you've added slash likes, do another set re you know, restriction uh, to really let you drill into just the best content. So the folks don't know, we're here with Rich Skrenta from co-founder from Black, Blecko, who has a distinguished career in tech in ninth grade, wrote the first Apple II virus. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he worked in Sun Microsystems, Netscape, which became AOL, and then uh, Topics, and now Blecko. Um, Topics is obviously the local, you know, powering back end that powers a lot of the local papers, and huge, huge company. Chris Tolls is the CEO over there, uh, acquired, by, acquired by, was it Tribune? Tribune Gannett and Knight Ritter. Yeah. And there's a huge amount of page views. So I live in Palo Alto, so the local Palo Alto Online has all, you know, the local sports and comments all powered by Topics. So you have, you have seen your share of data scale channels challenges um, from running open directory at Netscape, um, dmoz.org, and, and, and topics. So you're seeing a lot of the local, you saw the local, you saw the big old school search paradigm, you saw right. local, now you're in Blecko. Talk about the user experience and the tech. Obviously mobile is, is hot, it's the edge of the network. Companies like Groupon are getting you know tons of press with local stuff, coupons, and mm -hmm. local this. I'm hearing the word local almost as much as I hear photos in the in the startup community. You know, everyone's that's the mm -hmm. hot area. So right. You've been there, right? So you're building this massive end user engine for right. search. What's your focus? Is your focus to have people use you directly as a site? Are you looking to push out APIs? You, know, you haven't figured it out yet. Um, what are your what is your focus relative to this whole new user experience? Well, we're, we're we're doing both. I mean, first and foremost, we consider ourselves an end user consumer destination site. We want people to come, switch their search engine to Blacko. Do come do you know make do slash tags right? Make the, make your own slash tags or at least use ours. If we can figure out that you've done a query where we can automatically turn on a slash tag for you, maybe you didn't know we had a slash colleges slash tag, but you did a, a query and we say, oh, that's a you're you're looking for where to go to college next year. This can take the spam out. Let's turn this on for you. Uh, 
we like putting out our data and APIs. We're trying to be extremely open. When you talk about big data, there is no bigger data set than the web, right? It's the sum of all human knowledge. It's the world's library mm -hmm. online. And it's interesting to me that like, you look at the uh, papers coming out of universities. University professors don't write enough papers about the web. And the reason is they don't have the data set. It's a data set they don't possess because to, to have the copy of the web to analyze. You need you, big you, servers. You need a thousand servers and you need gigabits of bandwidth. You have to be crawling all the time. So, you know, and it's too heavy to move. I can't give you a copy of the web. I mean, how, well, I'm going to have to send a truck down with 50 yeah. racks in it. So how do I give you the web? Well, I give you the web by giving you APIs, by giving you very powerful ways to intersect it in real time, surf the web backwards, like who's linking to you? Who linked to you five minutes ago? To answer that question, you have to be constantly crawling the entire web, see any time a new URL goes, you know, goes online, go fetch it, index the backlinks. It's extremely computationally difficult, but we can then turn that data back to the public, data that the big guys up to this point have kept secret. They don't let you see your backlink data uh, in any sort of detail. You, and you guys are offering that? We're offering all of that stuff. What about the fire hoses, Twitter and, because you know, Google and Twitter, mm -hmm. Twitter have a relationship. Twitter mm -hmm. is also with Microsoft. Mm -hmm. has the Twitter fire hose. Are you guys with Twitter on that? We don't have the fire hose. We have the, uh, what they call the garden hose. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think it's like 15% of all tweets. Uh, and so we're doing some things with that. We haven't we haven't stepped up to the uh, fire hose yet. Yeah, because you, you know, sign with Knip now for the licensing. Big yeah, I think they want to charge like, you know, my firstborn son or something. They, they they significant. It's very expensive. Uh, I've been pretty critical on Twitter and their whole developer <laughs> They should community. give it to us for free. So though. I want to develop on top of uh, um, Blecko. What, what can I do? Do I just sign in with you guys? Can I ping the APIs? Because mm -hmm. uh, the users are consuming now through different avenues, mobile, sites mm -hmm. like ours. Um, in the old days, just go to browser, browser-based. Now you get right. mobile. Um, how are you designing for mobile? Do you see this uh, fitting into that? Right. Yeah, well, we, put out a, uh, we put out an app to use Blecko. Uh, on both uh, iPhone and Droid, so you can go into the marketplaces or the uh, App Store. You can get the Blacko app, and it's uh, it's pretty cool. We've seen some some pretty good adoption on that, and it's a nice interface. Um, you know, we've we've done a lot of positioning with Blacko around the slash, right? And if you have an iPhone, the big problem is the slash isn't on the first keyboard. You have to go to the second keyboard to get to the slash. So the Blacko app actually fixes that. It, it put, you know it you know highlights the slash, and and it often suggests slash tags. So you don't even have to type out the slash tag, which is important. You know if you're trying to type something on your iPhone, you know you want to type as little as possible, really. <laughs> um, so it's a pretty it's a pretty slick way to use it. It's very fast, um, and it's a nice nice user experience. We have Rich Grenta, the CEO of Blacko um, and co-founder, uh, tech guru in search. Uh, final couple minutes I'd like to spend with you talking about a couple things. The user experience, um, what you're seeing out there and what's changing kind of going forward. Um, specifically, what are the top challenges that you're seeing with search right now? And, and search being kind of a holistic term, not just you know, going to the page and getting results. Just in general, people search for stuff. They're online. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the biggest challenges? Are they clutter and all these things? But what are you seeing in your data mm -hmm. that you can share? Well, you know, on the on the user experience side, we've got this feature called slash tags, which, you know, you look at it and you're like, well, did they introduce the command line syntax from DOS into the search box? You know, what's up with that? And we, we actually did a lot of user testing around that. I mean, you know, the, the mirrored glass and the moderator and the, you know, the cameras running and bring people in off the street. And it was kind of cool because uh, we had assumed that this was sort of only going to appeal to technical people, to geeks, right? That they would like it, but, you know, this is going to be a hard sell for grandma. And from random people in the public, we got a lot of pushback, actually, in that messaging. They're like, slash weather, you know, what's so hard to understand? I get it. Slash shop, this is great. Slash date. Oh, yeah, I've always wanted that. It's very mnemonic. So once you show people, uh, they tend to use it. Um, and, you know, we started to think, hey, you know, people are using hashtags on Twitter. Uh, Paris Hilton has a BlackBerry, you know. The, the audience has gotten more sophisticated since, you know, when I was at AOL, uh, you know, n years ago, and they said, "Oh, you can't click on the columns in AOL Mail and sort because Grandma couldn't understand that." Well, Grandma knows how to sort by columns now. She's, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. she's she's pretty web savvy. So, uh, and it takes a lot of the functionality that you might otherwise have to put into a very complicated advanced search page, and it, it just hides it. Right? We have so we have a search. They're, they're search more. They're smarter. The mm -hmm. users are smarter. Is it speed? Is it clutter that the big challenge is? I mean, your big challenge. I mean, knock down your top three challenges that you guys are we're developing on to solve. Our top challenges are really on the, you know, on the back end, on the search relevant side, you know, crawling. How do we go get every URL on the web, evaluate it? Is it porn? Is it spam? Do we want to include it in our index? What's, what's the topic of this page? Is it a, suitable for slash date? Is it a good live crawl page? Sites that don't let us crawl, right? Um, unfortunately, Facebook only lets Google and Bing crawl them. We, we're not allowed to crawl Facebook. We said, well, you know, let Black go in. They're like, yeah, we like you guys, but, you know, gee, you know, some people scraped us and we're selling the data and we just don't know. We have to think about it. 
Blackout can't crawl Facebook. Um, you know, it's like kind of like Google and Bing pulled the ladder up after they, you know, after they got in the top spots. Uh, in order for us to index the web, we have to have access to it, and uh, and we need you know lots of hardware, um, lots of good classifiers. It's sort of ten problems all strung together like yeah, a. Yeah. So, f question for you: We're with Rich Grenther, the CEO of Blecko. Um, a question about entrepreneurship. You know, obviously your experience. You and I are uh, about the same age, a couple of years off. Um, I think you're two years younger than I am. But, you know, in our day and age, computer science was different. You had to start a company. You had to buy, you know, DSU, CSU's routers, <laughs> uh, Sun Server. It's very expensive. So there's a lot of, it's easy to be a startup. But it's also, as Andy Kessler pointed out yesterday in the extraction point, there's more startups, but it's easy to, you're more competition, right? So mm -hmm. what's your advice to startups? We're here in Cloudera. There's a t lot of smart startups working with big data. Um, what's your advice to startups around Going forward, what advice would you share with them in terms of building a company? Not a flip, I don't want to build an app. Like serious entrepreneurs who are like what I call the A, a plus athletes out there, mm -hmm. uh, tech geeks. What's your advice to them you can share I, with I them? I think go start a company. I mean, there's a lot of exciting stuff being built right now. And it's really cool that you can build a company for less money. I mean, back in the late 90s, you know, you needed $5 million in a Series A to go buy your Sun servers and get your Oracle license and then go get racks in the data center. And now, you know, you can rent all that. EC2, you get MySQL, it's free. Uh, you know, you're off to the races with, you know, you know, hundreds of dollars, literally. I mean, you don't need that much money. And so we're seeing a lot more people starting companies. You don't need 50 people to go put up a website anymore. You can do, you know, What's one, the key one success factor that you would share with them? You know, you know, young buck came to you and said, you know, Rich, what's the key thing I need to be aware of in the market? Uh, you know, I would, you know, fail fast and iterate, right? If what you're doing sucks, realize it and try something else. Um, I know like some big successful startups that went through three or four pivots. And, you know, you can't stick with something if it's not working for too long. You know, just pull the plug on it. If you got time on the clock still, try something else because your next idea could very well be a winner. All right. We're here with Rich Grenta, the uh, CEO and co-founder of Blecko. Final question to end the segment here on the extraction point is, uh, what's your vision of the world we live in over the next five to ten years? I mean, five years ago, Facebook was just kind of you know, dipping their toes in the waters, putting out you know, college, you know, bad UI, and mm -hmm. now grew up to a huge company. Um, Google's changing. What's going to change in our world in the next five years in tech and for consumer on the, consumers on the Internet? You know, I don't know. It might, it might be around five years. It might be 10 years. We've gotten about half the gizmos from Star Trek so far, right? <laughs> okay, and we're not going to have the laser beams and all that stuff because power is still a problem. Yeah. But, you know, the thing we want is to be able to talk to our computer and have it be our personal assistant. Like, you know, the middle class all got rich, but there's no butlers, right? But everyone wants that, that thing that knows them really well that they can ask any question. Hey, can you go book this flight for me? Where's my buddy? You know, what's for dinner? You know, you know, what time is, you know, Obama getting into SFO? I want to avoid that traffic. And just have it, have it know you and be able to interact with you in some kind of fluid way. We've got, you know, this sort of, you know, landscape of applications that we use. Applications on our iPhone, applications on the web, you know, Facebook, Twitter. We've got hundreds of buttons. It's like we're all flying personal 747s that we've put together, right, with a million buttons, you know, and you're like, I can, I can, I understand all these dials. But just to be able to fluently converse and have, you know, a sophisticated system uh, be your buddy online. I think we're going to get that. I think we're getting close. We have all the, the component pieces. I think so. you're right on that. I mean, I think that's computer science and where it needs to go. I mean, I, you know, I was talking with um, someone on the Cube. We were at an event, and they're saying, you know, if computers were cars, if cars were computers, we'd be driving into the wall. I mean, <laughs> when you drive a car, you don't think about the steering wheel. Mm -hmm. You're looking at the road. You're doing your thing. Right. But computers, no, the computer science has not evolved to a true reasoning kind of value proposition. I mean, Star Trek's kind of cool to say that, but the reality is. That's where it's got to go. I mean, that's the tech, right? Oh, I think we're I think we're on the verge of it. Connect, you know, Microsoft Connect is so cool, right? Yeah. You know, it can yeah. finally, hey, it can see me and it can understand what I'm what I'm gesturing. Yeah. You know, natural language processing, you know, understanding spoken speech. It's gotten good lately. It doesn't yeah. suck anymore. You put all this together, and I think there's you know a platform of tech that another generation of entrepreneurs are going to use, and they're going to make some really cool stuff. I got to ask one more question because we're on a roll here. I like this this conversation. Um, Big data is one of the hottest buzzwords. I mean, I'm not a big fan of it. O'Reilly actually didn't call their show Big Data. They called it Strata, hmm. the data conference. Um, but big data is a big hype report. You deal in the world of big data. <laughs> data now is at the center of the value proposition for all this stuff, cloud, mobile, social, <laughs> um, where data warehousing used to be this fenced off kind of industry, <laughs> locked in and maybe use the data. But data is being used every day to create value. What's your definition of big data and what does it mean to folks out there? 
I mean, big data is data that can't exist on a single box, right? You know, if you need 10 servers or 100 servers to hold your data set, um, you know, there are not really nice turnkey off-the-shelf solutions to do that. We're just starting to get some, you know, sophisticated products that can do that sort of thing. And, you know, here we are at Cloudera, you know, they're being generous, at, you know, hosting this. And they're doing some really exciting stuff around that, um, you know. If I do a query, you know, is it going to take like 24 hours for, for it to spin in this old database system? Or when I was at AOL, right, log processing, they had a billion browser starts a day on AOL.com. They couldn't process the logs in 24 hours. It took more than a day to process a day's worth of logs. In that, you know, if you're a product, mar you know, product manager, you're like, well, did pe people use my service? And, you know, you'd go and you'd click on the form and it would just sit there and hang and then the browser would time out. Uh, it's really exciting to be able to say, can we take tons and tons of data and get to it? quickly can I can I grep the web with a regular expression right I can't because I have a machine that can do that but how do we how do we empower regular people how do we turn these yeah, tools speed, over to everyone speed and provide yeah. good value personalization you mentioned this Absolutely. kind of assistant yeah all right cool well I really appreciate you coming in Rich Grenta the CEO and co-founder of Bleco hot startup who's pretty humble not over hyping their service these guys are, are programming away they're trying to create a great user experience have some interesting uh, new updates they have the slash tag concept which was which was at launch but recently have uh, a relationship with stack overflow which is a very popular community around uh, development and programming and tech uh, a new feature around like the like button slash like button and you guys are just sticking to your knitting programming away indexing the web and uh, hopefully getting some relevant search results. So thanks for coming on The Extraction Point. I'm John Furrier with SiliconAngle.com and SiliconAngle.tv. That's a wrap for this, this episode of Extraction Point.